Well, when I, growing up in the States, it's Joel. But every time I go to Europe, I'm called Joel. So I really don't know. I kind of like Joel. Always a woman to me is, uh, that's interesting because a lot of times you see in reviews or uh, articles, it says only a woman. People make a slip all the time. It's, uh, that started out as the view from the 35th floor. <laughs> It's, she's always a woman to me. I was, I was living in an apartment on the 35th floor in Manhattan uh, on the east side, and I, I'm looking at the window, and I'm writing this melody. It's the view from the 35th floor, and I knew I wasn't going to keep that. And uh, that came around to, uh, to be she's always a woman to me. A lot of This was when the whole women's consciousness thing was happening in the mid-'70s, and a lot of women were entering the workforce and a lot of men is, if a man does well in business, they say he's got moxie, you know, he's got a ambition. But if a woman was too pushy, they said she was a bitch. And I didn't buy that. I said, I think a woman can be good in business and still be a woman. It was written for my wife, you know, uh, not, I, I've seen it interpreted a lot of times as uh, he doesn't want her to change. And that wasn't the point of the song, it was don't change for me. You know, you don't have to change for me. There are some people in the music business that resent the video because most people who are in re the recording industry, engineers and producers and a lot of musicians, devote their whole life to the audio part of it. And now that the video is becoming very big, there's a certain amount of people are resentful. Why do I have to put into pictures what I've given people to use their imagination with? Uh, I take the other view. I think it's a form of communication. And any form of communication is good. And uh, it's another art form. Pressure, yeah, pressure. Uh, I think that was written halfway through uh, the nylon curtain. I, I kind of run out of ideas, and I was sitting here at this table, uh, and I'm, so what am I going to write about? What am I going to say? What am I going to write? And the woman who um, is my secretary was in the house, and she's looking at me, and she says, well, you really look like you're under a lot of pressure. Why don't you write about that? So I went, thank you. You know, that's a good idea. That's where the song came from. I see it as a, uh, just a song about soldiers. And uh, I didn't set out to write a political song. I just wanted to write out what I knew friends of mine had gone through. Uh, a lot of my friends went. And uh, when they came back, they weren't really encouraged to talk about it. And I asked, I said, what happened? What happened? What happened? And little by little, it kind of emerged. Everybody sort of had the same experience. They felt abandoned to an extent. And uh, I think ultimately, anytime you write about what soldiers go through, the, what the whole thing becomes at the end is, is an anti-war song, um, which is not what I set out to write. I set out to write a song about soldiers as people, not as political uh, figures. Good night, Saigon. I started writing this uh, four or five years ago, but uh, about Vietnam, but I didn't have enough information, and I also didn't think the time was right to uh, do it. Uh, the other albums really weren't, uh, it wasn't the right setting in which to put that song. Uh, I was talking to friends of mine. I had the idea for the song, but when I did the Nylon Curtain, I said, this is the time to do this song right now, because they had just opened up the war memorial that they built in Washington, D.C. And also, there was a lot of um, media information coming out about uh, the effect the war had on soldiers, uh, right about the same time I was doing the album. And I said, this is the time now people will be able to listen not without it being that painful. Because a few years ago, it would have been too, uh, you know, people, they didn't want to hear about it. And now I thought that things were opening up about it, yeah. Hi, I'm David Bowie and you're watching Countdown, Europe's number one rock show.